subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello viewers, welcome to another edition of Joy Learning. I hope you are all very fine and you are ready for the lesson. My name is Anita Oche Asari, your teacher or whichever way you want to call me. Now, I'm sure you have called most of your friends, peers and classmates to sit, pick up their notes, pads, pencils and other things that you need in social studies for today's lesson. Today's lesson is a continuation of last week's lesson. So, as you can right, rightly see, it's social studies time. I'm hearing somebody say, hooray, that's great. Now, so, that's the topic on your screen. But even though you've seen that the topic is our country, Ghana, I'm going to quiz you a little before we start the lesson. Yes, so that's the quiz. Relevant previous knowledge. Relevant previous knowledge. List to importance of national symbols. You remember the previous lesson we learned about national symbols. So the question is, list to importance of national symbols. And two, stay two ways of fostering national unity. Yes, I know you are ready. Send your answers to the social media handles of Joy Learning TV and I will mark your answers. I'm, I've already started marking some people's own and they are doing extremely well. Good. Now, the answers to the review questions. That's on your screen. One, the first question's answers are these. They identify Ghana as a nation. Two, they promote patriotism. I'm sure you can add other answers to it because we have already learned them. The answers to question number two. By being tolerant. You should be tolerant. Without being tolerant, what happens? You always find yourself in trouble. So tolerance is very, very important in everyday life. The next answer to is promoting inter-ethnic marriages. Yes, promoting inter-ethnic marriages. So I'm very sure your mom is from a different region and your dad is also from a different region. So, and even from the same region, but different ethnic groups. And they've come together so it is good because it helps in what inter marriages now let's look at the objectives for today so quickly run through the objectives and see how today's topic is going to be interesting you know it's already right by the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to, one, state and explain the national symbols or explain the symbols of national unity in Ghana. That is, one, the coat of arms, the coat of arms, the state sword, the president's personal standard, and lastly, the president's personal poll. Ex exciting objectives, isn't it? Let's run through the topic for today. Wow. Interesting. Look at the picture on your screen. I'm sure some of you are saying, today we are going to talk about military rule. No, it's a no. But I want you to look at the picture very well. And identify something that is a national symbol on the military personnel's appearance. So from the head 
to the chest, as you can see, what can you identify? Sure, you are right. You can see something on her berets, the soldier's berets. There is a symbol there. So we'll find out what that symbol really means. So this is what you saw in front of her beret. So that means that it's two beds with a shield and some writing and inscriptions. Right, we will still learn about it. Again, there is another picture on your screen. What can you say about the picture? That's a, that's a beautiful Mercedes Benz. And you can see the flag of Ghana on it. And you can see in the vehicle someone's hand out of it. Guess who the person is? So that means that this is the presidential vehicle in which the president sits inside anytime he's moving to a destination or in a convoy for a meeting to meet another president from another country. Right. So in front of the vehicle is that national what? What did you see? Yes, so a national what? Unity or a national, a national, the coat of arms in front of the vehicle. So that means that it is only the president can, that can use a vehicle with a coat of arms in front of it. No one can even uh, have a vehicle and put a coat of arms on it unless the president of the land. So we'll move on and see more of the pictures as we learn. It's the same coat of arms. So this eagles, the shield, and then other inscriptions on it is called their coat of arms. Let's see what this coat of arms really does in Ghana. Good. The coat of arms is the emblem or the badge of the nation. The coat of arms was designed by Mr. Amon Kote a Ghanaian of blessed memory. I really don't want to be talking about things like that, but you know, they have done their best. And so you learning social studies today will also strive very hard to become a great person in future so that someone will also talk about you. Right, kudos to Mr. Amon Kote. You did very well for Ghana. So shall the youth and then all social studies students also become great people one day now it was found on all or it is found on all letterheads it is used by government departments and ministries and government departments only so that means that the coat of arms is only used by what government departments so for instance ministry of education is part of the government departments Mention them, where your daddy works, where your grandma once worked, where you will also work in future. That's if you want to go and work with a government organization. Then you can use their coat of arm on your letterheads. So if someone is not working with the government and brings you a letterhead and, and writes certain things on it and tells you that you want funding, you have to probe. Because there are a lot of scammers. I'm sure the ICT teacher has told you that already. There are a lot of scammers. So you have to look out whether the letter is coming from the appropriate quarters. What again can you see on your screen? That's a very beautiful, well I use beautiful for the picture. But that's a handsome man, Mr. Amon Kote of Blessed Memory. The one who designed the coat of arms of Ghana. Remember, someone also did something. And then Mr. Philip Beho did something. And uh, Madame Tudusia Oko 
also did something. What can you also do? Now let's look at Mr. Amon Koti. He designed this beautiful coat of arms. How did he think about it? I'm sure he sat down and through hard work, he came out with this. This wonderful and beautiful coat of arms. There he is again in his old age. A very energetic, intelligent, aspiring man. He did it and he made it. Kudos to him. Now we'll still talk about the coat of arms. It is a shield which carries the colors and the symbols of the tradition and hopes of the nation, of the nation Ghana. When you see the coat of arms on anything you know, that thing belongs to the people of Ghana. And so it belongs to the nation. So for example, if the government wants to give you exercise book, you will see that on the exercise book, the coat of arm is embossed or designed on it, which shows that this is from the government to your school or to your community. Are you okay with that? And these things are not supposed to be sold. So if you see anyone who is selling an exercise book, pens, pencils with the um, logo, the coat of arm on it, it means that the person is trying to do what? To steal, which is not right. Let's look at this again. This is social studies curriculum. That's the new curriculum. What can you see on it? You can see the colors of Ghana on it, isn't it? Yes. And then you can see on the right side, Beneath the book, you can see the coat of arms. So that means that this curriculum was made by National Council for Curriculum and Assessment of the Ministry of what? Education. Right said that it is only those who work in the government departments that can use the coat of arms as a logo. So you can see that. Here we have the logo of all that I mentioned, which is in short, is called NACA. NACA. And then the coat of arms. So no one should sell this book. It was given to all schools across the country for us to do what? Be able to teach what is in it. That is the content in it. For you to be intelligent. For you to be able to pass your examinations too. So that's the picture of the new social studies curriculum for basic seven to basic 10. Another beautiful picture on your screen. Some of you always pass in front of it and have never asked that what building is that? So in front of the building, you have the coat of arm. I hope you can see that. The coat of arm is right there. So this is the Flagstaff house where the president's office is. He does his day-to-day -day activities there. He signs a lot of documents. He interacts with other people. It's not an easy task at all. I pray that one day you become a president and you will see how tedious it is to work in the presidency. And even all those who also work in the presidency, it's not an easy task at all. So this is the seat of government where the president works. Today, the pictures are a lot. I could go on and go on, come with Ministry of Health, come with Ministry of uh, Gender. They all have logos, their own official logo, but in collaboration with the coat of arm. So this is the Ministry of um, Energy. This is the Ministry of Energy. And their logo is just as you can see, the coat of arm, straight like that. So we have the Republic of Ghana, and, in, and on top of it, we have the Ministry of Energy. 
as we move along, we'll be discussing into detail the symbols that we can find in the coat of arm. Yes, we are going to describe the coat of arms. So, description of the coat of arm. Ghana's coat of arm is made up of four main parts. Four main parts. But we also have six parts again. But the main ones are what? The four. So, the first one is there is a shield in the middle. Let's go back and look at the diagram. Let's go back and look at the diagram. Right, so that's the shield in the middle. That's the shield. So you, sometimes when you remember when you were in Sunday school, they used to talk about David and Goliath. And then they had, Goliath had a shield. But then we are not talking about RME. We are talking about, I just want you to have the idea. So a shield is what? It's a protector. It's a protector. Good. Let's go back to the continuation of the description. There is a black star on the shield with gold trimmings. There's a black star with, I can, I know, I'm sure you can picture it at home, even though I have shown you the, the picture of how the coat of arm is like. And I know most of you have taken your textbooks and you are looking at it as I do what explain to you. So there is a black star on the shield with golden what? Trimmings. Trimming. Okay. Then, thirdly, there are two eagles carrying the shield. Yes. And you know the bear, the eagle, very strong. Yes. So that is what is happening now. It holds the shield. So it means that it's protecting. We, the Ghanaians, are behind the shield. So whatever or whoever wants to come and harm us, the eagle will just come down and then just crush the person. Just like you're watching a cartoon. You see it. Good. There is, and the fourth one, which is the fourth point, is there is a motto on which the star, the shield, and the eagle's rests. Good. I'm very sure you are jotting down the four main points. I'll give you some few seconds to just write down the points. So the first point is there's a shield in the middle. Second point, there is a black star on the shield with golden trimmings. The third point is there are two eagles carrying the shield. And fourthly, there is the motto on which the star, the shield, and the eagle's wrist. Now, remember I told you that those are the descriptions. But then we have features. We have features. So the features are going to take every bit of what? Design that Mr. Monkote designed to make up the coat of arms. So here we go. Right? As I start explaining. The first feature is the staff and the chief sword. The staff and the chief sword. And then the next feature is the castle and the wave on the sea. The castle and the wave on the sea. And the third point is the cocoa tree. The cocoa tree. I know some of you will be saying cocoa tree, but the word is cocoa because it's English, right? Next is the, the shaft of a mine. And then again, is the green cross. You see, in the middle of the shield is a colorful green cross. You see there, right there. And it's, it's, the real name is St. George's Cross. St. George's Cross. But we normally call it the green cross trimmed with gold. So alongside it is gold. I'm going to give you an assignment to draw the coat of arms. Somebody is saying, oh, I can't. You have to. It's your coat of arms. So you should be able to draw it. 
I've drawn mine. I'll show it to you at the end of the lesson. And then lastly, we have the golden lion. A lion that is made of gold. You can see that when it's coming, it will roar like that. So nobody can touch Ghana because we, we are versatile. We are ready. And our anthem also tells us that we are bold and strong. Now, the whole shell stands for a weapon which helps us to fight ignorance. So that's what the shield does. It helps us to fight ignorance, poverty, disease, illiteracy, hunger, and all kinds of bad practices in the society. Again, the shield contains five pictures which tells the story of Ghana. So keep watching. Sit attentively and let's listen to the story. Right. The story begins like this. As we unfold the key designs in the coat of arms. In the top right corner, there is a castle and the wave of the sea. Yes. The top right corner. I don't want to go back to bring you the picture but I'm sure you can memorize the picture and then flow along with me right so the castle stands for the country's central government the castle you remember the Christian Bond castle was where once other presidents lived but now it has become a tourist site because we now have the Flagstaff house so the castle stands for the country's central government which was brought to Ghana by the white man from overseas and it takes or it is the working place for ruling the whole country at first that was where the seat of government was I think during the time of um, the late president uh, flight lieutenant Jerry Jer John Rawlings yes I think that was where he was he was operating from that's where he was working from yes he 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 worked very hard may he so rest in perfect peace anyway again in the top left hand corner of the staff and sword of a chief in the top left hand corner of the staff and a sword of a chief that is what it tries to mean that in the top left hand corner we have the staff and the sword of a chief so two things there. They are the symbol of a chief's power that symbolizes traditional authority. So that means that in Ghana, we respect the chiefs in every society, in every community. The chief is the leader. So I will come and teach you the hierarchy of the, the nation. It starts from opinion leaders to assemblyman, like that, like that, then to the chief executive, and on we go, we go. But we are talking about the coat of arms. As we are saying that they are symbols of a chief's power. That symbolizes traditional authority. The staff and the sword stand for local governments in the country. It also tells us that our chiefs were ruling the people, that is our forefathers, before the white man came. That was their duty. And we're doing very well, but now... We don't know what is happening. Anyway, some of them are doing very well, but some too need to be encouraged to do the right things. They also show the importance of our chiefs. So that part, the top left-hand corner of, of, the, of the coat of arm, tells us that the chiefs are also in power. They also have a ruling in their various communities. The third point, in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a cocoa tree. I'm sure you can see it if you have the textbook at home. Yes, the bottom left-hand corner, there is a cocoa tree. The cocoa tree stands for Ghana's natural vegetation and the agricultural potential wealth. Remember when you go to the western region of Ghana, can get a lot of cocoa from them well uh, shanty region you can get and some parts of the volta region too you can get some cocoa from there so 
this makes Ghana a wealthy nation. We, we export our cocoa for foreign exchange. And then other agricultural plants, like when you go to the north, the millet, the sorghum, and others. Mention them. I know you are smart, and you have even jotted down and written more than what I have said. The fourth description. In the bottom right hand corner, there is a shaft of a mine. Remember we said that. A shaft. It looks like a shape. When we were young, those days, we used to say it was a shape. But today you have learned that it is not a shape, but rather a shaft. And what is a shaft? So the shaft stands for Ghanaian's mineral wealth. It's a kind of machine that is used in what? Mineral. Or processing mineral. Can I say that way? Let me use that way. Can, that is used in processing mineral. So it tells us that Ghana has many minerals such as what? Gold. Bauxite. Diamond. Magnets. Salts. Oil etc which are very important to the nation a nation without these minerals cannot actually progress that means i have to rely on another nation but we are so blessed that we have all these things and this man mr monkoti saw it that it was very important to add these things to the coat of arm for us not to forget that we are a nation with great what? Wealth. The fifth point. The gold lion or the golden lion in the middle of the shield. So around all these things on the shield is the golden lion in the middle. What do you think the, the lion is doing there? Can you come and take our things away? Yes. So the coat of arm was made just after the independence. So those people that were trying to steal our minerals, when they came and they saw that this is our coat of arm, they saw that, oh, Ghana is poised for something. And so the lion there alone <laughs> will do what? Will scare them away. And you know, the lion is also made of gold because we are a nation that sits on gold. We have a lot of gold here. We are blessed. To be Ghanaian. I'm blessed to be a Ghanaian. I'm sure you're also blessed to be a Ghanaian. Right. So this stands for the Union Jack. Union Jack. Yes. Somebody will be saying, what's Union Jack? Remember, we're colonized by the British. And the British, their, their coat of arm is called the Union Jack, which continues to link Ghana and British government together till today. To, till today, even though we have our freedom, we still have what? Collaboration with the British government. The link makes Ghana or the link makes Ghana its member of the British Commonwealth of Nations. So we are part of the Commonwealth of Nations, the countries that, belong, that were colonized by what? By Britain. Point number six. The green cross in the shield, which tells us that all the people of Ghana must live together. That's the St. George's cross, that green thing. And green means what? Flourishness. Green means flourishness. So when you are in greens, it means that you are flourishing. I love the color green very much, very much. So we are saying that the green cross in the shield, which tells us that all the people in Ghana must live in Harmony, peace, must live in peace. And remember, the earlier um, topic that we learned, we must do what? We must tolerate. We must tolerate. Again, it tells us that we can only develop when we are united like the cross and live peacefully as one people. So St. George's cross tells us that we should live peacefully amongst ourselves. Point number seven. That is the two eagles carrying the shield. Wow. 
Have you seen an eagle before? You've been seeing it sometimes, but you actually don't know that that's an eagle. So today, even though you have not seen it, try and come out of your rooms after the lesson and try and look around or travel to the forest belt of Ghana and you'll see an eagle. And you'll be so excited to see it. It's very, very strong, a strong bird. Now, let's see what the eagle does in the coat of arm. The eagle is a very large and strong bird. It is called kings of birds. Kings of birds. This is because it is strong and powerful. If two eagles are carrying our coat of arms, then that means that our independence is in safe hands. Good. So the two eagles stand for protector with strength, very clear, and it has what? Attentive eyes. Attentive eyes. Keeping watch over the country. So this is what simply the eagles do to the shield. They are watching. And who are the eagles? It's you and myself. We are the eagles. We have to be watching. So that when people are doing things that are not right, what can we do? We prompt them to stop. Are you okay? I hope you are enjoying the lesson and you are understanding. If you don't understand anything, just go to Joy Learning TV on the social media handle and then write where actually you do not understand and I'll answer you through this channel. Right, let's continue. The two eagles are proudly wearing black star medals suspended from a ribbon of their of the Ghana colors. So when we say something is what? Uh, is a metal and is suspended, it simply means that it's just like the way you wear necklace. On your, so they also have their necklace. So that's their necklace. And it is made of what? Red, gold, and what? And green. Red, gold, and green. This also tells us that we must be proud that we are Africans and Ghanaians. Eight points. There is a wreath on top of the of the shield. When we say a wreath, something that has been woven or designed eh, on top of the shield. The wreath is woven in the colors of Ghana, and you know the colors of Ghana. We just mentioned them: red, gold, and green. And the black five pointed star trimmed with gold stands on the wreath. It stands for the Lone Star of Africa's Freedom. Now, somebody may ask, what is Lone Star? Lone Star is when the Black Star of Africa beca became a Pan-Africanism and anti-colonialism, simply when we became what? Free. So freedom. So Lone Star simply means freedom. Now let's look at the motto. The motto of Ghana is freedom and justice. Freedom and justice. Yes, so that's it. Freedom and justice. Written on the ribbon, firmly held by the legs of the two eagles. So that means that these eagles are strong. So once they have held the freedom and justice, we forever will be free and will have justice too. Or we will have justice and we will be free indeed for the rest of our lives as Ghanaians. I'm sure you're happy when I said that. I'm also very excited when I said that. Right. So we are saying that the legs of these two legs have held on to the motto. We can, we can find this motto under the shield of our coat of arms. This means that Ghanaians are free and independent people. The motto helps us to do great things. Now let's come to the state sword. The state sword is also another symbol. This sword or state or the symbol represents presidential authority. It is held by the president as he takes the, he takes the oath. We don't have a female president. One day we'll have a female president. If you learn very hard, you become a female president. So it is held by the president as he or she takes the oath of state at his inaugural meeting. 
and will be born before him when he comes to Parliament House for the state opening of Parliament. The state sword is made of gold and is designed, and its design is based on that of the double bladed Afenanta, that's a Ghanaian Akan word, Afenanta, the traditional symbol of interstate peace. Afena, Afena and Ta, she say a eh, eh, side mean. And the Afena ni yeden is second, call it cutlass or something, a sword. Yes, so it has two sides, right? I wish I had one to come and show to you. One day I'll go to the presidency and tell them to give it, so I'll come and show you to you on air. Now the sword bears on one side the following symbols: one, Nyami to me, a square circled and triangle known as God's power, symbolizing the presence of God in our society. And two, Adishe Brobe, a symbol based on the shape of what? A pineapple. So it's shaped as a pineapple, signifying royalty and sovereignty. Supremacy, sovereignty, supremacy, head. Right. B, on the other side of the following are the symbols. One, a symbol of what? Freedom. So that's it. That's a symbol of what? Freedom. I'm sure you love freedom. When mommy is restricting you sometimes, you get, you understand. So the symbol means freedom. Being Kebi, symbol of justice, and Adishi Abrobe. So these are some of the symbols on the state sword. So that's the picture on your screen. So you can see that one side is different and the other side too is different. Now let's look at this picture. I think you know this great man. That's the ex-president John Ajekun Kufo. When he was sworn into power, he held the state sword. Followed by the late... President Evans Atta Mills, he also held the state sword. And ex-president John Dramani Mahama also held the state sword in his inaugural, the day he was inaugurated into power. And that's our president, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, His Excellency, current president, he also held the state's sword. Now let's talk about the president's personal standard. The president's personal standard. This standard consists of the Ghana's presidential coat of arm on the blue background. The coat of arm is made up of black star and the flying eagles of Ghana. You remember the eagles on the coat of arms with the following symbols. So this presidential personal standard also has symbols one of the symbols is there are three concentric circles when you talk about concentric there are circles that starts from the middle so from the middle another one another one another one like that but this is only three and there, there's a cross which is called the kirapa otherwise known as the musudie or a symbol of good luck and sanity we are really learning about Ghana. We are learning about great things that we actually did not know. So that's the picture of the president's standard, uh, president standard personal standard, or the president's standard personal standard, or the president's personal standard. So you can see the three circles, the concentric circles, and then you can see that in the circle, the eagles are doing what? Holding it up. Right. So then we have the presidential, the presidential or person, uh, president personal standard pool inside the president's office. He has this, and which is unfurled. When we say unfurled, unfurled means that to make or to spread. Eh? It's unfurled by a glider standard pool. This is decorated with the following symbols. One, prekese, which shows sovereignty. Then, a war for a dobe, symbol of diplomacy and prudence. Right. 
So, and then again, we have the Inkwanchima, a symbol of beauty, and then Dretri, which is a symbol of what? Guiltiness. All right, I want you to just write them down very fast, and then we move on. Right. Okay, inside the president's office, it's his personal standard, which is unfolded by a gilded standard pool. This is decorated by the following. The fifth one is what? Babadia, symbol of continuity of what? Life. Everybody wish the president a long life on his seat. Then we have the Nkonsong Consul. Then we have the Inchinchim. Then we have the Intesia in, in or Matsi Messie. Mati Messie. So that means that as a president, it's not everything you have to talk. You understand when we are working with the president, you don't have to be is dropping all the time. It's not a good attitude at all. So that's a symbol of wisdom. If you are always, you always zip your mouth, you have wisdom. But if you talk loosely, hmm, you should know that it will not help you at all. Now that's the picture of the president's personal standard pool. I couldn't get, the, get it on the internet. So this is what I had. But I'm sure most of you have seen it in your textbooks. Right. Our lesson is coming to an end, or is almost at the verge of ending. Now let's look at the review questions for today's topic. List four main parts of the Ghana's coat of arms. Four main parts. I'm sure you are just mentioning them. That's good. You've mentioned one. I'm sure someone else is also mentioning one. And then question number two, who designed the coat of arms? Answers to the review questions. One, the four parts. There's a shield in the middle of the coat of arms. There is a black star on the shield. Again, there are two eagles carrying the shield. And again, there is a motto on which the star, the shield, and the eagle rests. And then question number two. The name of the person who designed the coat of arm is called Mr. Amon Kote. I'm sure you have kept that anywhere you find a question like that, you'll be able to answer as you prepare yourself after these current people have written their BEC. And so, Form 2, you'll be writing your BEC very soon. I'm sure some of the Form 3s too are watching and We'll also take a cue from all that we have said in case there's a topic or uh, question on our country, Ghana, or Ghana, my country, you will be able to answer it very well. Assignment time, homework time. Guess what are the questions that are coming? Send your answers to Joy Learning TV on YouTube. So as we go, let's roll to see the questions. I'm going to unfold the questions. They are not difficult. I know you can answer them. Let's go. Right. Write short notes on the following. The president's personal standard. Two, that's I, I, the state's sword. And then question number two, with an aid of a diagram, draw the Ghana coats of arm. I'm very sure that would not be difficult for you. You will be able to do what? To draw it, color it nicely, and send your answers to me on Joy Learning TV at or on YouTube. It's fun to be with you. Hope to see you on another topic again. It's a bye-bye. For me, your facilitator or teacher, Anita Ochri Asari. It's a bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.